So in this week's Creative Confidence Catch-Up, I'm going to be chatting with Ashley. So Ashley, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm Ashley. I'm an actor, writer, activist from the northwest of England, and I'm really happy to be here today. Yeah, I really love like when we started chatting on LinkedIn, I just love that idea of being uh, like an actor, but also an activist. And I just love how those sorts of um, things connect. But my first question to you today is in, in relation to your own confidence and how, how you are with things right now, um, what is your definition of success and what does it look to, it like to you at the moment? So success for me is just being able to do what you enjoy doing to the point where you don't have to worry about like paying your bills and stuff yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think I'd feel successful when I'm like acting or writing to the point where I don't need like a bill paying job mm -hmm. so I think when I get to that point anything else will just feel like a benefit and um even better than anything else will just feel like just a bonus because yeah, if I can get to yeah. that I don't have to like make sure I've got enough money to pay my bills and stuff that'll be that'll mm -hmm. be fine with me anything else I'll be happy so is with. that maybe something that is sometimes a setback for potential actors and things like that is that one of the things that where you're really enjoying what you're doing but is there kind of setbacks there where sometimes it can be a struggle to pay bills absolutely yeah I think it's gotten a little bit better now because a lot of it's online so mm -hmm. before the pandemic you're having to factor in going to London for example staying over money was always at the forefront of am I going to be able to do this and obviously you've got to do like classes you've got to if you want to do extra workshops and stuff there's always things that you're having to make sure that you've got enough money for even things like spotlight and your equity and everything it's not a cheap business to get into mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you've got enough money to ensure that everything's covered, including your bills and then everything acting wise. So then if you can get to the point where you're not having to worry about that, I think you are then in a better position. And I think that's why there's not as many working class actors, mm -hmm. because they're having to focus on making sure that they've got a roof over the head and everything and then acting's like a, a second thing. So is acting uh, something that you've all, always wanted to do then ever since like a uh, little? Yeah so I always knew I wanted to do something creative like school was a nightmare for me like even from primary school like it was something I never enjoyed doing like now I'm working as a teaching assistant and I'm seeing that it's still exactly the same as when I was in school mm -hmm. and seeing all these kids struggling and it's still such an emphasis put on like your reading your writing your maths and your science and all the kids who've got like a creative brain they're really struggling and it's nothing's like factored in for those kids it's still like when I was in school I um I, I knew that like by the time I was doing like my GCSEs and everything I knew that I wanted to be an actor so I did try hard but I knew that I wasn't going to need like the sciences and stuff to do what I wanted to do but I remember when I was in school and when I was on with my first agency, they got me some extras work to do. And I was like, this is amazing. I get to go on set. I get to see what it's like. I get to not be in school. Mm -hmm. And because it was close to doing my GCSEs, they wouldn't sign the forms for me to go. And it was just like, even though it was something big, I was going, I was going out, I was working, I was going to be earning money they didn't see it as something that I needed to be doing it was the GCSEs were more important so it, it was just frowned upon mm -hmm. and I still think it's like that now as well do you think at the moment then uh, well I I find that um school education it can be a bit of a tick box exercise mm -hmm. and do you find that like did you one did you feel that you struggle potentially um to to be who you wanted to be just because of the pressures of um I suppose um education and secondly um how are you, how are you finding it with other kids and can you see what you went through in them mm -hmm. sort of thing definitely yeah it definitely is a tick box thing and I just think the whole school and system's so outdated now it's just like you're sitting in a classroom and you're just expected to absorb all this information even if it's not how you learn mm -hmm. and I just felt like doing my GCSEs it was just a competition of who can remember the most yeah. and I sat there and I revised so much and I still didn't come out with like like I had good grades I had enough to go to college but the amount of work that I put into it I didn't feel like the grades matched up to it and it just felt like obviously I was glad that I did what I did but I just felt like it was a bit of a waste of time that I was mm -hmm 
doing all that work and didn't come out with it. Mm. And I, like I am seeing it with the kids now because a lot of the kids that I'm working with, they've got like additional needs. So mm. they might have learning and, and cognitive um they they need extra support with that or they might have ongoing mental health issues and they struggle to be in that classroom environment and I find that there's not there's the support put in place where they can go to other places in the school but then it comes down to you still need to make sure that you're doing your coursework you still need to make sure that you're doing your GCSEs and that's the most important outcome it's not how can we ensure that you're in an environment that makes you feel comfortable to the point where you can do your GCSEs it's just at the end of the day you're still going to be sitting in that that hall that classroom and you're still going to be expected to do these things yeah I totally get that and it's quite nice how you kind of just centered around like that feeling like like people care that support that network yeah. sort of thing and I totally get that so for for my next question then like who would you feel that has been like really uh, someone who's kind of helped you to get where you want to be um yeah who would that be or, or are there I'd many people I definitely say my mum because like when I was back in school and the, the school was saying I wasn't allowed to go do this, this and this. Mm-hmm. It was always my mum that was like, well, I'm saying that you can do it. So why aren't you allowed to do it? And she was always the one that like, if we'd like see like family friends and stuff and they'd ask that question of oh, what you're doing after school and everything. And I'd say, oh, I want to be an actor. She was always the one that were like, well, there's always going to be jobs in that field. She was always the one that was like looking for agents for me to join like classes and stuff she's always been the one that's been like really really supportive supportive and I know that like some people don't have that and I'm like really lucky to have that support system but both my mom and my dad like they, they've just been really supportive from the get-go which has been I think if if I'd had like other people being like nah I don't think you can do that I don't think it's the best option like think about like your future and that they've never never ever stamped on what I wanted to do and they've always been the ones that are like drive me to places and stuff which has been I think if I hadn't have had that I wouldn't be at the point that I'm at now and I think like it is one of those that um if you don't have those sorts of people in place then Mm -hmm. no wonder I suppose there are so many kids when they finish school and things they're all in Mm -hmm. this negative frame of mind right it's like well I haven't got that support so then if if I suppose they haven't had the support then how are they meant to believe in themselves I don't know if you, if you yeah. agree no definitely yeah mm-hmm. because it's like you see it all the time and it's like when the the, the typical like going home for Christmas and stuff and they're yeah, asking yeah. like those questions like when you're going to be on Cory or whatever it's like they don't quite understand mm-hmm. so if you've got that in your ear or like the flip side of it of people being like well you're never going to succeed there's hundreds of thousands of actors trying to do this what's the point of even trying if you're constantly getting that fed into you yeah, you are eventually going to believe it and you're so vulnerable when you're younger that you are just going to listen to the comments because why you've got nothing to to back it up to be like oh well actually I can do this so you are going to listen to that and if you're not quite as confident in yourself and you don't have that support system you are going to you, you're just going to listen to what they're saying and just go mm. down the easy route yeah and also when you are about like in, when people are I suppose it's that societal expectation of like who mm-hmm. you should be where you should be going and things like that I, th- I think another thing that I found is very important like when we were having that chat about being an actor I really like the fact that as part of your story it's like going then into this activism sort of thing which I I feel like because you have that story to kind of share it makes it more important to kind of get you out there and be that person that's a bit different to um a a normal actor if that makes sense there's a bit of purpose behind it would you like to tell us a bit about that and how that came about yeah so I've always been interested in like doing things to help I just didn't know how to to go about it and I think again during lockdown because everything had moved online Mm -hmm. it was a lot easier to access that information and stuff so it was during lockdown when um there was the the George Floyd was killed and there was that big spark in the the Black Lives Matter movement again that was when I I was ready to get involved with it and I was able to find more information on that so I was able to find a local group in Liverpool called Merseyside Alliance for Racial Equality and Merseyside Black Lives Matter Alliance so Mm -hmm. joined up with them it was one of them things where because it was in the moment a lot of people wanted to be involved and a lot of people wanted to help so we started off with the meeting and there was like loads of people but 
as time on time went on a lot of people dropped off and didn't quite help and it was just I didn't want to be one of those people who just wanted to do it because it was it was in the moment and jumping on the bandwagon or whatever they were doing I wanted to make sure that I was still doing it so I was involved with them I was doing the social media um doing the posts and stuff constantly getting involved as much as I could with that spreading the word which then led on to them creating the Merseyside Alliance for Racial Equality which I'm working with at the minute so I'm a director of that CIC and we just do workshops so the person who co-founded it the the person who's like fully at the front of it is called Chantelle Lunt and she's just an incredible person and um, she's constantly doing things for, to fight for racial equality and just being able to work alongside her and just doing what we can to make sure that it, it it stays relevant and prominent in in the Merseyside area so been working with them and um, again during lockdown just coming out of it I was working with Fair Share mm -hmm. so they're a oh, wow. food poverty reduce waste and everything that they're, they're an incredible organization and um, I was working with them in the warehouse and doing some of their social media things as well so it's just it was very, very eye opening because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the picture of like the 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 UK and it's all the food banks and it's like mm -hmm. there's more food banks, than McDonald's and it's just insane. So to be able to just do something so small to help out with that, it was just it, it felt very, very needed, especially coming out of lockdown. And it's still very much needed now. I think it unfortunately is getting worse rather than better. And the amount of people that are relying on food banks and then obviously working in a school now seeing the the panic that comes from families when it's coming up to like half term summer holidays yeah. and stuff because mm -hmm. they're not getting the free school meals and everything and, and seeing the things that need to be put in place from a school's perspective to ensure that people are being fed it's just it shouldn't be at that point we shouldn't be in this in considering how rich this country is to be at the point where schools are having to put things in place for kids to be fed it's just disgusting hmm. so to be and able to do something so small it felt it, it felt very much needed yeah and it does like it makes sense as to kind of what it is that so being a teacher for example when you see hmm. that firsthand as to how it's affecting people Mm -hmm. that I suppose would tick in your brain it's like oh actually there's something that needs to be done here and I suppose mm -hmm. by kind of however little so or however big the contribution it's going to create that ripple for those other people and it's going to help them isn't it so I, I totally get that mm -hmm. it's yeah. just the fact that we have to do it so like the working class mentality of like supporting your own and everything the fact that it's been placed on the shoulders of people that might not be in a position themselves where they're, they're like lucky enough to whatever like not like go on holiday for example they're just scraping by themselves to then have to then make sure that other people are able to pay the bills other people are being fed it's not right that it's it's put on our shoulders to ensure that everyone else is okay whereas everyone else higher up they're not even thinking about it because they've never been in a position where they have to decide whether they're eating or paying the bills and stuff. So for the people who know and have gone through it themselves, it's just second nature to make sure that these people are okay, but it shouldn't be our responsibility yeah. to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And when it comes to like, um, obviously the, all this activism stuff that you're doing and then the, um, acting side I don't know mm -hmm. what it, it what I'm thinking well I do know what I'm thinking but do you know when you have this like some thought about like well what if this was this and how does it get put together like that sort of I don't know have you ever been doing any acting where it's kind of like those sorts of people who you've been working with and things have you ever been put in the position where you've had to act as one of those roles if that makes sense like people who might be homeless people who might be mm. have you ever been put in one of those positions where you've kind of had to act those characters because I yeah just, I could see that so like the latest character I played I rapped on a film not so long ago and I was playing a, a nurse so it was like being in, in that position yeah, and everything yeah. like dealing with the stresses of stresses of strain of working in the NHS and everything and it's just 
like I've not had to do it as much. There's been other characters and stuff because I've got like a younger looking face. It's more yeah. like younger characters, so they've not got as much stresses and strains as uh-huh. other people in the world. So I've not gotten to the point where I've had to do that yet. But it's just funny that you asked that. And the last character mm-hmm. that I played was like working in the NHS, which obviously is a a big thing at the minute of all the the struggles that they're going through themselves. Yeah, I love that. And also, um, is there any maybe particular character that you potentially like to act? in the future mm-hmm. future or is there a certain like thing out there that you would like to do for, like, in terms of filming and things I think it would be really interesting to do something like a um like a information thing for maybe like the food banks and things like that or doing mm-hmm. a short film to to then educate people on what's actually going on because I'm from a a small town I'm from a small working class town so I think some other people in in different maybe like more down south people who are like in the the middle class higher Mm -hmm. class situation they're the closest they've ever got to like struggling was again during lockdown when they didn't have the money and it was like if we could then do something to be like this is what people are struggling with because obviously you're seeing it on the news and everything and if you're not watching the news you're never going to know what's going on like on Granada, which is my local news, you see things like the kids struggling, the kids going to school, the rent issues and everything. So I'm aware of it because of that. But if you're not in that position where it's not being highlighted where you're from, you might not be as aware of it. So if you can then go and do it in a short film, a TV series or whatever, it might be more informative than someone just reading a news article because then they can be like looking into it a bit more. And I think when you're seeing things on a series or whatever if you don't know about it you go and research it don't you so if you could do something like that and just highlight it it might be a bit more it might work a bit more than just throwing it in someone's face and expecting them to do something with it yeah like a bit more impactful into it and then it's obviously that sort of emotional response of oh if I was put in that position oh Mm -hmm. this is awful and it gets people want to kind of take action that bit more or help in some way I totally get that Yeah. Mm yeah 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 um so at the moment um my next question then um so what what would you say your creative style is then considering you're on about like um like the, the stuff that you're looking at is um, you want it to be more educational and things like yeah what is your creative style then so what would you say I actually am writing a series at the minute and it's nothing to do with like all this stuff it's still something I'm very very passionate about so I think my creative style is finding a story that I'm passionate about so that it doesn't really feel like work because I know that writing and and acting it can be quite hard to do all of the time especially if it's such a hard hitting topic Mm -hmm. you're gonna get like like if you're in the world of working through it you are gonna get burned out at some point if you're just putting all of your effort into it so I try and counteract that with what I'm doing with stuff that I'm still very passionate about still stuff I enjoy but it's not as hard hitting so um this is the first time I'm, I've I've written other things but this is the first time I'm like actually wanting to take it further and being like right okay this is what I want to do this is what I want to say so it's very very early days of me being in that creative point of this is what I want to do this is what I want to tell whereas like in the past it's just been applying for things being put forward for things doing other people's stories but this is now something that it's still someone else's story but it's still something that I'm very very passionate about which is great so I think if I can get that to a point where it's like people are wanting to see that then down the line when I've got a bit more of a platform I can then tell the other stories that I'm I'm passionate about and it's going to reach a wider audience than it might have done if I was to do it now and, and not as big as I would be down the line yeah it makes sense and also I suppose it's relating back to that why purpose sort of message as well where it's like why am I doing this and for you a lot of it sounds very informative you want to create that impact with people and things like that and I suppose if things like that are resonating with that why you're more Mm -hmm. more inclined to do those things I suppose absolutely yeah yeah and if, if you're still enjoying it whilst you're doing it again you're more inclined to to see it out through the end and if it's something that 
is as hard hitting as obviously going on about the racial equality issues or um, the food poverty issues or climate change, for example, you are going to be dealing with things all the time, which is a lot to deal with. So if if you're not enjoying the process while you're doing it, obviously these stories need to be told and you're not going to enjoy a lot of the stuff when you're talking about it. So if you can do it in a way that you still want to do it, you still attached to it, you're still engaged with, then mm. that, that's, and I think that's why the entertainment medium as a whole success, succeeds because you're doing things in a way that people are enjoying. It might be a hard story to to listen to, but if people are enjoying it and people are engaged, you're more likely to get the message across that way than if you were to just put an article in front of someone and they don't like reading, then yeah. you're never going to do what you want to do. Yeah, and also, so do you find like with the, the parts or the 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 bits that you play where they might be hard hitting stories do you find that like if you were because obviously I'm not too sure as to how how long you would be filming on these things for but do you find that it's when you were on about burnout then do you find that they are hot like more hard on your like own health and sort of thing than if it is something that's more light-hearted and like something that's not about political sort of issues and things like that yeah definitely I think you have to train your brain to not take it home with you. So if you're doing these hard hitting things, obviously you need to be in it. You obviously need to be as real as possible. So there is going to be a level of, of deepness you go into it because you are going to need to portray it as naturally as possible. But once it's stopped, you need to be able to just compartmentalize it and just leave it on set. Because if you was to take it all home with you, it would be, really have an impact on your mental health and I think the most hard-hitting films or series that you do are usually the the funnest sets that you've been on because everyone needs to keep things light in between otherwise if you're all in that that headspace obviously when it comes down to it you're still professional you give people the space that they need to to get into it but you just have to make sure that you're there for each other so that no one then goes on to a bit of a spiral into that that deep darkness Mm -hmm. of it all so it is you do it is hard at first but you do start to learn how to deal with it a bit better and everyone deals with it in different ways so there's going to be different things that you do as a person to to let it all go whether that's just getting in the shower and washing it away or exercising or whatever people are going to have different ways to deal with it and just let it go and leave it on the set wow well this has been such a great conversation like obviously when you're speaking about these things like you wouldn't sometimes when you're watching things you don't actually think about all of these little bits Mm -hmm. in between but yeah it's been absolutely fantastic like speak to you today and um my last little bit for you say any words of encouragement or wisdom that you'd like to leave off with it can be creative or not whatever you decide I think creative or activism wise if it's something that you are interested in getting involved in don't jump into it too fast and and too hard like obviously there's going to be things that you want to do there's going to be things that you want to change there's going to be stories that you want to tell but again it all comes back to burnout you've got to build those healthy habits and just start off small start off light and then build it up because I know that I myself when there were so many things that I wanted to change when there was so many stories that I wanted to tell I wanted to do it all and I wanted to do it all then but you need to just like ease yourself into it because you can't help others if you're not helping yourself. I t- totally love that. No, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been much appreciated. Thank you for having me. It's been great to be here. <laughs>